this unit is unit six. It's on cellular reproduction. Welcome to nine weeks two. This is Department of Education competency 4B. And that basically states we're gonna differentiate between types of cellular reproduction. Simpler terms, identify stages of mitosis and meiosis, compare and contrast mitosis and meiosis, and differentiate between sexual and asexual reproduction. We're also going to describe how crossing over contributes to genetic diversity. We're going to break this video down also into two parts. So if you want to breeze all the way through it and take your notes, that's fine. If not, uh, we're going to start with cell division, which is going to be mitosis. And then the second half will be dedicated to meiosis. Um, so let's get through this part first, and then I'll tell you when you can stop taking your notes. So cell division, the, the definition for that is the process by which a cell divides into two new daughter cells. Cells have to reproduce for a lot of different reasons. One is sometimes they get too large to function. So they have a certain number of organelles that can be used. And once they get too large, it puts stress on those organelles. So that's when a cell would have to uh, divide and reproduce. Um, sometimes cells also need to rep reproduce to heal wounds. So if you cut yourself, uh, what happens near that wound is that the cells start to, start to divide rapidly so that your skin cells will be able to cover the wound and protect what's underneath. The picture here shows that you start with a parent cell, the two nuclei divide, so that's those two black dots in number two, then third, the cytoplasm divides, and you have two daughter cells that are identical to the first cell that we started with. Before the cells divide or reproduce, they have to make new organelles, and they have to make exact copies of the cell's DNA. One parent cell produces two new daughter cells. So we start with one cell, you can see that picture at the bottom going from left to right, and then the two new cells are called daughter cells because they're the offspring of the first cell. The daughter cells can also be called clones or offspring, and genetically identical means that they have to have the same DNA. So the DNA from the first cell has to be copied and split evenly between the two new cells in order for them to function properly. Cellular reproduction can also be called asexual reproduction, and asexual just means reproduction by one parent. So some types of asexual reproduction are binary fission, which is on the left. So binary fission is used by some bacteria to reproduce. Then on the right, we have budding. Yeast is one organism that reproduces by budding, uh, and that means that they create a little offspring, it's a little bud that creates, or a node, uh, that creates on the parent organism. And then eventually when that bud matures, it pinches off and it forms a, an entirely new organism. The next type of asexual reproduction we'll talk about is the cell cycle. So the cell cycle, remember, is for somatic cells, which are all the cells in your body except for sex cells. The first part of the cell cycle is interphase. So interphase is the longest part of the cell cycle, and it has three different parts to it. You can see on that picture at the bottom, first we have G1, which actually stands for GAP1 and that is a time for cell growth. So the cell is taking care of business, doing what it needs to do, uh, making proteins that it needs, and kind of hanging out, growing. Then we have the S phase. So the S phase is the first part of preparing for mitosis, and that means that it is synthesizing the DNA. So remember, the daughter cells have to have an exact copy of the parent cell's DNA to work. So this is the part of the cell cycle where the DNA is copied. 
Then we go back into another gap phase. This is called G2. And this is when the cell is finalizing preparations for mitosis. It's duplicating its organelles. It's growing a little bit more and it's getting ready for that cell division. Then we have the M phase. So here the M phase is in blue. You can see yellow is interphase and then the dark blue is mitosis, the light blue is cytokinesis. So the M phase stands for mitosis, and mitosis means that this is the part where the nucleus and the cytoplasm divide into two new cells. Here we have another chart, so you can see interphase, the longest part of the cell cycle, and then down at the bottom is the M phase. So we have M phase is broken down into smaller parts also. So during mitosis is when the nucleus divides. That would be prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, or PMAT. And then cytokinesis is the part where the cytoplasm actually divides. Here are some more pictures of the process. So down at the bottom left, starting with interphase, then we go into prophase, chromosomes become visible, metaphase, chromosomes line up in the middle, anaphase, chromosomes are pulled apart, telophase, two nuclei reform, and then finally cytokinesis, when those, uh, the cell membrane pinches together and forms two brand new cells, both genetically identical to the first cell that we started with. So let's go into this PMAT again. So you need to know what they look like and you need to know what happens in each phase. So that's what we're gonna talk about now. First is prophase. The chromatin condenses and becomes visible. So you can see down there uh, at the bottom in that picture in the center of the cell, that's the nucleus. The chromosomes or the DNA has replicated itself and formed into chromosomes so that it can be easily separated. The two sister chromatids form, that's each half of the X of that chromosome. The nucleolus and the nuclear envelope are disintegrating. So the nucleus has to divide in order for those chromosomes to separate. Then we have metaphase. That's when the sister chromatids line up at the equator of the cell. Metaphase means middle. The spindles grow longer and attach to the centromeres. So the spindles are coming out from these centrioles and they're attaching to the chromosomes so that they can start to divide them. Next we have anaphase. Anaphase means apart. So the sister chromatids get separated. The spindles pull them to opposite sides of the cell. Then we have telophase. So this is the last part of mitosis. The two nuclei reform at opposite sides of the cell and the spindles begin to dissolve. So telophase means two. The last part of the M phase is cytokinesis. Cytokinesis is when the cytoplasm actually divides. So that cell membrane will pinch together to form new two, two new cells. However, in plants, remember, there, there is a cell plate. So in plants, the process of cytokinesis is a little bit different in that a cell plate forms. So you can see in that picture at the bottom, we have these vesicles coming in and they're forming a cell plate so that after telophase, when those nuclei begin to reform, the cell plate comes down the middle and actually separates and divides those cells. Something that can go wrong during mitosis uh, is cancer. So cancer is a disorder of the cell cycle and it's caused by a defect in the genes that regulate cell growth. So what happens is mitosis produces a bad cell, if you will. That bad cell then has a genetic defect that causes it to grow and reproduce uncontrollably. So there's no regulation of the cell cycle. So that bad cell will pass on that defect to every cell after it. Um, that will cause a mass or a tumor to grow. 
So that is the end of the section on mitosis. If you'd like to stop here, you may. If not, we'll go on to meiosis. So meiosis is the process by which the number of chromosomes of the cell is cut in half by the separation of homologous chromosomes in a diploid cell. Now, hopefully you have done your vocabulary and you know what all those fancy words mean. Basically, this is gonna be the production of sex cells and we'll talk about that whole process next. First, let's talk about sexual reproduction. So remember, mitosis is a form of asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction is the production of offspring from two parents. So this type of reproduction produces genetically different offspring. So you see mom and dad there. Dad produces sperm, mom produces the egg. They come together in fertilization and produce a baby. The differences between asexual and sexual Asexual reproduction is by one parent, it's done through mitosis, and produces genetically identical offspring. Sexual reproduction, on the other hand, is by two parents, it is through meiosis, and it produces genetic diversity. You can see at the picture on the bottom, on the left, is asexual reproduction or mitosis, so that produces two genetically identical daughter cells, but then on the right, we have meiosis. So that produces four haploid daughter cells or four genetically different daughter cells. Meiosis again produces sex cells and it goes through a process of two cell divisions. So those four daughter cells at the end contain half the number of chromosomes as the original organism. And this is what produces genetic diversity. If you cannot tell, that is a very important term, genetic diversity. Sexual reproduction is for genetic diversity. So an adult organism inherits DNA from both its parents. So you got half your DNA from mom and half your DNA from dad. The matching sets of chromosomes that you get from each parent are called homologous chromosomes. So remember, our root word homo means the same, and in Latin, that means a green. Also, uh, we have haploid and diploid. Those are two of your vocabulary words, very important. Haploid equals half. So meiosis produces cells that have half the number of chromosomes of the organism. You can also see this written as N. Cells that contain both sets of homologous chromosomes are diploid. So diploid means double or two. So that would be the matching set of chromosomes that you get one from mom, one from dad. And that is shown as 2N. You can think of that kind of like a math problem so if 2n equals 12, then n equals 6. Um, in humans, we have 46 chromosomes total. So you get 23 from the sperm and 23 from the egg. Together, they make 46. So here's another example of that. Haploid is half. So if a cyclops, that would be the mythical creature with one eye, if the cyclops Cyclops sex cell contains 15 chromosomes, then N equals 15. Diploid is double, so an adult cyclops would have 30 chromosomes, meaning that 2N equals 30. Here's another side-by-side -side comparison of mitosis and meiosis, and you will have to know these types of things. Mitosis Asexual reproduction by one parent produces genetically identical offspring. Meiosis, sexual reproduction from two parents, which means diversity among offspring. And here's another side-by-side -side comparison. So mitosis is somatic cells. It has one nuclear cell division. Each daughter cell is diploid, which means it has the double number of chromosomes, 2N and it produces cells for growth and repair. Meiosis produces sex cells, two nuclear divisions. Each daughter cell is haploid, so it has half the number of the adult chromosomes, 
and it produces gametes for sexual reproduction. Gametes are the sex cells, the sperm and the egg. So let's look at the stages of meiosis now. Meiosis occurs much like mitosis. So we have PMAT, remember, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. But since we have two nuclear divisions, it's gonna happen in two rounds. So first we have interphase. And remember during interphase, we have the S phase. That's when the DNA makes copies of itself. Now during meiosis one, we have a very important process that occurs and that is crossing over. That's what creates the genetic diversity. So you can see down at the bottom here, we have this little chart, we have interphase. Then first is meiosis one. So you can see those chromosomes after they have replicated themselves, they've exchanged little pieces. The blue chromosomes have some red parts, the red chromosomes have some blue parts. So that's where the genetic diversity comes in. Then after meiosis two, we have four daughter cells that have half the number of chromosomes as that first cell. This is just another look at the phases. So at the top, we have meiosis one. So we have interphase, the cells just hanging out, makes a copy of its DNA. Then during prophase one is when crossing over occurs. Then we have metaphase middle, anaphase apart, telophase two new nuclei. Cytokinesis occurs and then we go right into meiosis two. So the same kinds of things happen. Prophase two, the nucleus dissolves, the chromosomes become visible, metaphase two line up at the middle, anaphase two, chromosomes are pulled apart, telophase two, those cells divide, and then finally cytokinesis. So there are four of those daughter cells at the end of the final cytokinesis. So let's take a closer look at crossing over. Crossing over again produces genetic diversity in organisms. Very important. This is the reason why you don't look exactly like your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister or your cousin because your chromosomes have crossed over at some point and when you got half from mom and half from dad, it's kind of a crapshoot as to what parts you get. Crossing over occurs in prophase one of meiosis one. So here you can see the chromosomes are aligned, then they cross over and they actually exchange parts of those strands of DNA so that what you get are recombinant chromatids. They have recombined to form a new genetic code. So once meiosis has completed, then you have the sex cells that are created. So you have a sperm and an egg. Once that sperm and egg come together, they form a zygote from fertilization. This is the end of your notes. So if you have not taken all your notes, please go back, review them. Um, make sure you have those prepared for when you come to class and we will review them next week.